This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. Arlo had it. He had it real bad. It was the need. The need for speed. Let me explain it to you. You see, ever since Arlo was a little boy, he had this compulsion to go faster. It started the day when he was just a little baby and his mama lost hold of the stroller. Little baby Arlo went a flying down that hill on Main Street. Mama and everyone in hot pursuit. Now, when they caught up with him, little baby Arlo was just fine. When mama scooped him out of the stroller, little baby Arlo said the words that would haunt his mama to her last dying day. He said, baby, go vroom. When Arlo got a little bit older, he kept pushing himself to go faster, entering soapbox derbies and racing his bicycle down the steepest hills in town. And like he said, I can't help it, Mama. I gots the need, the need for speed. And so, one day when Arlo had grown to teenagerhood, he was watching the news item on the TV. Seems that the Air Force was using these little itty-bitty rocket engines to boost heavy transport planes into the air. He felt the need of coursing through his veins. Without missing a beat, he lit out to his local army surplus store, but dang, just his luck, they were fresh out of rocket engines. And the man at the store said that the Air Force wouldn't sell a rocket engine to just any old Tom, Dick, or Arlo. Oh. With the need of gnawing at him, Arlo hatched a plan. He called his local Air Force base, saying that he was Mr. Arlo J. Arlo, president of the Arlo J. Corporation. Could they please ship him a rocket engine immediately? It arrived the very same day. And where do you think you're going? Shouted Mama. This here's an army surplus rocket engine. I'm a gonna set me a world land speed record. Cause I got the... Yeah, I know, said Mama. You's got the need for speed. Arlo stomped on the gas pedal. Y'all be back in time for supper. Arlo drove the old dry lake bed. The car took off in a cloud of smoke. She bounced across the dry lake, and at 88 miles an hour, Arlo, hard a pounding in his throat, lit the fuse. There was a pause. Arlo thought maybe the rocket motor was a dud. And then, it was alive, alive! Felt like an angry mule drop kicked him right in the chest. He gripped the steering wheel, holding on for dear life, as the fingers of acceleration needed the skin on his face. The car tore across the lake bed. He never felt so alive. The need for speed was fulfilled. Arlo looked across the lake bed ahead of him, or what remained of it. Ah, oh, dang! Up ahead of him and closing fast was a solid rock cliff wall. I don't really know what happened first. The tires blowing or the brakes melting. I guess it really don't matter much none now, because at that point, Arlo was airborne. And that's when he realized that flying, flying would be his salvation. He couldn't steer the thing and there was no way to stop in time, but if he could just get her up and over the cliff ahead, he pulled back hard on the steering wheel just the way fighter pilots on TV did. A few more feet. Just a few more feet, thought Arlo. The car kept flying upwards. <laughs> I'm gonna make it, Mama! Just then, the second stage of the rocket engine kicked in. Arlo didn't know these rocket engines had a second stage. Up through the stratosphere, then the troposphere, and into the ionosphere. And for one shining moment, Arlo J. Arlo lived his dream. He became the fastest man in the world! Yes, sir. This here's a true story happened to a friend of a friend of mine. And Arlo, yep, he still got that need for speed, but he's put it to good use. He's president of Arlo Express. Five, four, three, two, one. One, two.